Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Happy New Year everyone. Please like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Harness the power of the currency exchange planner. Mention the denarian and get the pre-negotiated price for my subscribers. Start the new year off right. Invest in yourself and your family's well-being today. Also, go check out my link below to the new carrot bar program. Now is the time to get involved so I can help you to help yourself. It's free to join and you will be ahead of everyone else and in our land. Get yourself set up today and be a part of Team Denarian. The Carrot Bar program is the true future of money. It takes the concept of gold-backed currency and the blockchain technology to the next level. You have the opportunity of a lifetime to get in on the ground floor of this program with me. Do yourself a favor and pause this video right now and go check it out. The link to the Carrot Bar program is in the description drop down below. I encourage you, stay ahead of the rest, take the initiative, and join me today on the blockchain-based Carrot Bar platform and let me help you to start off the year right. Okay you're back. First off, today I want to congratulate the over 120 of you that did join the Carrot Bar platform last night. You have seen the power of the program firsthand and let me tell you, it's just going to get better from here. 2020 will be the year this program takes off, and you are center stage. I look forward to working with all of you, together we will pave the way. Let's get started with today's news shall we? First article of interest for today. Amending a section of the regulations governing the work of brokerage firms buying and selling foreign currencies to slash brokerage firms buying and selling all foreign currencies, IMAM, number, 9 to 5 minus 511 date, 30th December 2019. According to Board Resolution number 185 for the year 2019, it was decided to amend paragraph 3rd of Article 10 of the regulations regulating the work of brokerage firms by buying and selling foreign currencies number 1 for the year 2018 to be as follows. Opening accounts in the local and foreign currency in the name of the company with the licensed banks inside Iraq, provided that all the company's money is deposited in its accounts, and that the deposits and withdrawals that take place on the account be through its authorized manager and his assistant or whoever is authorized by law. Next article of interest. A deputy for Mason. Our financial allocations will be recycled due to the budget deficit. On Tuesday, Mesa Madharka Azal, a deputy from the Mason Governorate, confirmed that the financial allocations for the Governorate will be recycled in order to complete the projects in addition to a large deficit in the 2020 budget. Kazel said in a statement to information that the budget of Mason Governorate will be recycled after the meeting in the Ministries of Finance and Planning, where the money that has not been spent for the Governorates to complete its projects will be returned. Kazel added, the budget included the recycling of all amounts allocated to the Governorate, which will be recycled and returned in 2020 especially as the budget contains a large deficit. He explained that Mason Governorate did not witness the completion of any project completely due to the lack of time and the arrival of financial allocations late in 2019, noting that the government did not send the budget because it does not want to bear its responsibility, which will delay its approval and delay the arrival of the Governorate's allocations to another time. Next article of interest. Trade Bank of Iraq. How much we grow and achieve the best. With these words, Mr. Faisal God, President of the Iraqi Trade Bank and Chairman of the Board of Directors, started his speech at the ceremony of honoring the special employees of the year 2019 in a special gesture of the bank's management every year to motivate all employees in the public administration in all branches to offer their best exceptional efforts to excellence in career performance. Mr. Faisal God pointed out that in this year the efforts of employees have been very significant in increasing bank income until 26 December 2019 to 826 billion dinars, explaining that such efforts must be honored to grow the seat of competition in the ranks of our leaders to provide the best for our banking institution.
The president of the bank also explained that the bank's plan next year presents a new challenge in increasing collective efforts and providing the best, including working steps to open the bank's representative office in China, as well as working on the financing of national industrial projects who have advanced team from the bank to support the national product, which in turn will have a positive impact on the Iraqi society and market. Next article of interest. Trump blames Iran calls on Iraq to protect U.S. Embassy. U.S. soldiers fire tear gas towards protesters who broke into the U.S. Embassy compound in Baghdad, Iraq, Tuesday, December 31, 2019. Dozens of angry Iraqi Shiite militia supporters broke into the U.S. Embassy compound in Baghdad on Tuesday after smashing a main door and setting fire to a reception area prompting tear gas and sounds of gunfire. Baghdad AP President Donald Trump is blaming Iran for a breach of the U.S. embassy compound in Baghdad and is calling on Iraq to protect the embassy. Trump tweeted Tuesday that Iran killed an American contractor, wounding many. Trump says, we strongly responded, and always will. Now Iran is orchestrating an attack on the U.S. embassy in Iraq they will be held fully responsible. In addition, we expect Iraq to use its forces to protect the embassy, and so notified. Trump tweeted from his estate in Palm Beach, Florida, where he is in the midst of two-week-plus vacation. He's been largely out of sight and the tweet marked his first comment on the weekend U.S. airstrikes in Iraq and Syria. This is a major news update, app's earlier story is below. Dozens of Iraqi Shiite militiamen and their supporters broke into the U.S. Embassy compound in Baghdad on Tuesday, smashing a main door and setting fire to a reception area, prompting tear gas and sounds of gunfire, angered over deadly U.S. airstrikes targeting the Iran-backed militia. An Associated Press reporter at the scene saw flames rising from inside the compound and at least three U.S. soldiers on the roof of the main embassy building. There was a fire at the reception area near the parking lot of the compound but it was unclear what had caused it. A man on a loudspeaker urged the mob not to enter the compound, saying, the message was delivered. There were no reports of casualties, but the unprecedented breach was one of the worst attacks on the embassy in recent memory. It followed deadly U.S. airstrikes on Sunday that killed 25 fighters of the Iran-backed militia in Iraq, the Qatar of Hezbollah. The U.S. military said the airstrikes were in retaliation for last week's killing of an American contractor in a rocket attack on an Iraqi military base that it had blamed on the militia. The developments represent a major downturn in Iraq-U.S. relations that could further undermine U.S. influence in the region and also weaken Washington's hand in its maximum pressure campaign against Iran. Iraq has long struggled to balance its ties with the U.S. and Iran, both allies of the Iraqi government. But the government's angry reaction to the U.S. airstrikes and its apparent decision not to prevent the protesters from reaching the embassy signaled a sharp deterioration of U.S.-Iraq relations. Iraqi security forces made no effort to stop the protesters as they marched to the heavily fortified Green Zone after a funeral held for those killed in the U.S. airstrikes letting them pass through a security checkpoint leading to the area. Dozens of protesters pushed into the embassy compound after smashing the gate used by cars to enter the embassy. The protesters, many in militia uniform, stopped in a corridor after about 5 meters 16 feet, and were only about 200 meters away from the main building. Half a dozen U.S. soldiers were seen on the roof of the main building, their guns were pointed at the protesters. Smoke from the tear gas rose in the area, and at least three of the protesters appeared to have difficulties breathing. It wasn't immediately known whether the embassy staff had remained inside the main building or were evacuated at some point. There was no immediate comment from the U.S. Embassy. The protesters hanged a poster on the wall, America is an aggressor, and some commanders of militia factions loyal to Iran joined the protesters. Among those was Hadi Al-Amiri, the head of the state-sanctioned paramilitary popular mobilization units, the umbrella group for the Iran-backed militias. Yassine al-Yasseri, 
Iraq's interior minister, also appeared outside the embassy at one point and walked around to inspect the scene. He told the AP that the prime minister had warned the U.S. strikes on the Shiite militiamen would have serious consequences. This is one of the implications, Ali Asari said. This is a problem and is embarrassing to the government. He said more security will be deployed to separate the protesters from the embassy, an indication the Iraqi troops would not move in to break up the crowd by force. Earlier, the mob shouted, Down, down USA! As the crowd tried to push inside the embassy grounds, hurling water and stones over its walls. They raised yellow militia flags and taunted the embassy's security staff who remained behind the glass windows and the gate's reception area and also sprayed graffiti on the wall and windows. The graffiti, in red in support of the Qatar Arab Hezbollah, read, closed in the name of the resistance. Also, hundreds of angry protesters set up tents outside the embassy. As tempers rose, the mob set fire to three trailers used by security guards along the embassy wall. No one was immediately reported hurt in the rampage and security staff had withdrawn to inside the embassy earlier, soon after protesters gathered outside. Seven armored vehicles with about 30 Iraqi soldiers arrived near the embassy hours after the violence erupted, deploying near the embassy walls but not close to the breached area. Four vehicles carrying riot police approached the embassy later but were forced back by the protesters who blocked their path. There was no immediate comment from the Pentagon and the State Department on the breach of the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. The U.S. airstrikes, the largest targeting an Iraqi state-sanctioned militia in recent years, and the subsequent calls by the militia for retaliation, represent a new escalation in the proxy war between the U.S. and Iran playing out in the Middle East. Tuesday's attempted embassy storming took place after mourners and supporters held funerals for the militia fighters killed in a Baghdad neighborhood, after which they marched on to the heavily fortified Green Zone and kept walking till they reached the sprawling U.S. embassy there. AP journalists then saw the crowd as they tried to scale the walls of the embassy, in what appeared to be an attempt to storm it, shouting, Down, down USA! and, death to America, and, death to Israel. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Sunday's strike sent the message that the U.S. will not tolerate actions by Iran that jeopardize American lives. The Iranian-backed Iraqi militia had vowed Monday to retaliate for the U.S. military strikes. The attack and vows for revenge raised concerns of new attacks that could threaten American interests in the region. The U.S. attack also outraged both the militias and the Iraqi government, which said it will reconsider its relationship with the U.S.-led coalition the first time it has said it will do so since an agreement was struck to keep some U.S. troops in the country. It called the attack a flagrant violation of its sovereignty. In a partly televised meeting Monday, Caretaker Iraqi Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi told cabinet members that he had tried to stop the U.S. operation, but there was insistence from American officials. He declared three days of mourning for those killed in the U.S. strikes, starting Tuesday. The U.S. military said precision defensive strikes were conducted against five sites of Qatar of Hezbollah, or Hezbollah brigades in Iraq and Syria. The group which is a separate force from the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah, operates under the umbrella of the state-sanctioned militias known collectively as the Popular Mobilization Forces. Many of them are supported by Iran. Next article of interest. America sets a date for imposing new sanctions on Iran. The U.S. State Department announced today, Monday, that the United States will continue to impose sanctions on Iran next year. In a press briefing, on the phone, U.S. envoy to Iran, Brian Hook, said, The Iranian threat is receding and will continue to decline, especially as we tighten our sanctions in 2020 and make the situation in the Iranian economy more complicated. Since its exit from the nuclear agreement with Iran in May 2018 and the return of U.S. sanctions against Iran, the United States has pursued a strategy of maximum pressure on Iran which Washington accuses of seeking to acquire a nuclear weapon, support terrorism and destabilize the region. 
Next article of interest. Iraq is working for a $20 billion trade exchange with Iran. The Iraqi ambassador in Tehran, Jawad Saad Kandel, confirmed today, Tuesday, that raising the volume of trade exchange with Iran to the level of $20 billion has become on the agenda of the two countries. The ambassador explained when meeting with the governor of the Central Governorate Center, according to Farce News Agency, that the intertrade volume touches $12 billion. He referred to the existence of various projects and ideas that are proposed by Iran and Iraq in order to reach the desired commercial level. On the other hand, the ambassador affirmed that 6 million Iranians visit Iraq annually in return for the influx of 3 million Iraqis to Iran, pointing to the participation of 3.5 million Iranian visitors in the march of the 40th anniversary of Imam Hussein peace be upon him this year. Next article of interest. Deputy for Construction. We will not put up any new candidate without proving the president's violation of the Constitution. The deputy of the Construction Alliance, Mohammad Karim, confirmed on Tuesday that his coalition will not put up any new candidate for prime minister without proving the constitutional violation of President Baram Saleh, indicating that Saleh rejected three candidates for the building alliance without any legal basis. Al-Bal Dawi said in a statement to the information that the building coalition will not discuss any new candidate for prime minister because of the continued opposition of the President of the Republic, noting that the nomination and approval of a personality will only take place through proving the right of the largest bloc to submit a candidate and the inability of the President of the Republic to object on the candidate according to the Constitution. He explained that Baram Sali objected to three candidates for the construction alliance with different pretexts and just political whims, and the competent courts should be fair to the law and the constitution and determine the powers of the President of the Republic to enact New Year's for presidents who object to the candidates. The deputy from the Al Fath Alliance, Ahmed Al Kanani, had confirmed in a previous statement to slash the information. The continuation of negotiations on the position of Prime Minister, indicating that the coming hours will witness the introduction of new names for the Prime Minister in negotiations with other blocs. Next article of interest. US China, Phase 1, Trade Deal to be signed January 15 World News. US and Chinese officials said the agreement includes protections for intellectual property, food and farm goods, financial services and foreign exchange and a provision for dispute resolution. U.S.-China Trade War is China, Phase 1, trade deal to be signed January 15. A partial new U.S.-China trade agreement will be signed in the middle of next month, U.S. President Donald Trump said Tuesday, announcing that he will also then travel to China for continued talks. I will be signing our very large and comprehensive Phase 1 trade deal with China on January 15. Trump tweeted moments before Wall Street was due to open. The ceremony will take place at the White House. High-level representatives of China will be present. Trump said he would then travel to Beijing to continue negotiations at a later date. Word of the deal, and the day escalation of the trade conflict, has driven a Wall Street rally this month but U.S. stocks were lower at the open early Tuesday. The two sides earlier this month announced a Phase 1 deal in their nearly two-year trade confrontation, with Washington cancelling and reducing some tariffs in exchange for Chinese pledges to increase purchases of U.S. exports and adopt trade reforms. The text of the agreement has not yet been made public pending legal and translation reviews, U.S. officials say, and details remain scant. U.S. and Chinese officials said the agreement includes protections for intellectual property, food and farm goods, financial services and foreign exchange, and a provision for dispute resolution. Next article of interest. The dollar is falling to its lowest level in three weeks. The dollar is declining towards its smallest gain in six years. The dollar fell near a three-week low against the yen and weak trades at the end of the year, Tuesday as investors bought high-risk assets, driven by renewed optimism about global growth. The U.S. currency fell 0.2% against the Japanese currency to 108.64 yen, 
the weakest level since December 12 and is heading towards incurring losses for the third consecutive session. The dollar index, which tracks the performance of the greenback versus a basket of competing currencies, fell slightly to 96.695. On Friday, the index suffered the largest loss in one day since March, to shrink its gains during the year to about 0.5% compared to a return of 4.4% in 2018. The index is currently heading towards achieving the lowest rise since 2013. Encouraging news about a trade deal between China and the United States boosted risk appetite in the currency markets overnight. Reuters quoted White House trade advisor Peter Navarro as saying that the United States and China are likely to sign a one-stage trade agreement next week added the confirmation of that would be issued by President Donald Trump or the U.S. Trade Representative. And the Chinese yuan rose in foreign markets against the dollar to 6.9718, the highest level since December 13. He recorded in the last dealing 6.9743. But the yuan is still headed for losses for the second year as the trade dispute between the United States and China and a weak domestic economy cast a shadow over the currency. Once again, I would like to wish all denarians a happy and prosperous new year for us all. Hit the like and subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to find me on the other platforms, so you get news in real time as I get it. Harness the power of the Currency Exchange Planner today. Use the promo code FEDENARIAN for the additional pre-negotiated discount for my subscribers. Time is running out. Join me on the Blockchain Carrot Bar program today. You don't have to wait until you're filthy rich to get involved. It's free. I wouldn't steer you in the wrong direction. Think about it. I would be shooting myself in the foot. I would not recommend something I do not stand behind 110%. Did you ever hear the term? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. The links are in the description below. Get involved now. Knowledge is power. Over and out for now. The Denarian.